Uh, my name is uh, Mehmet Tohti. I'm a Uyghur Canadian. I was born in Kashgar, uh, the center of Asian Silk Road, nearly 2,000 years old city. And uh, I studied biology and then I became a teacher. I taught biology at the University of Kashgar before I made myself self-exile in 1991. And I came to Canada in 1998, and since then, I'm working with civil societies and the parliamentarians and the human rights organizations, just create awareness about the situation in China in general, and more specifically about the human rights abuses of uh, Uyghurs and uh, crimes that Chinese government committed against Uyghurs. Uh, is uh, in East Turkestan, which is known uh, historically and still Uyghurs call us as such. And the Chinese government indeed uh, changed the name as Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Uh, we have nearly uh, 1,500 to 2,000 Uyghurs in, across Canada from coast to coast. And we are very, very tiny, invisible minorities. And because uh, uh, huge crimes and atrocities being committed by Chinese government, and every Uyghur Canadian is affected by the crimes committed by the government of China. And so we are doing activism here, advocacy work here, and working with Canadian parliamentarians and civil societies uh, to not only create some kind of awareness about the situation of Uyghurs at the same time, trigger some action to address the issue within domestically and within uh, the allies, working with the allies internationally. The situation of Uyghurs uh, has been extremely bad since the occupation in 1949. And uh, the tragic, uh, dramatic situation emerges since 2016 when the, the Chinese President Xi Jinping decided to commit genocide against Uyghurs. And now we know, and the majority of Canadians also know that uh, more than three million Uyghurs in Chinese concentration camps were they subjected all kind of uh, physical and mental tortures. And uh, slave labor, Chinese government displaced a couple million Uyghurs from their homes and their social religious environment, and it dispatched them to all across China to work as a slave labor. And uh, at the same time, we know that uh, separation of children, it is enforced separation. Taking away uh, the children from Uyghur parents and uh, putting them under uh, state-mandated uh, orphanages. And also we know that enforced sterilization, mass gang rape, and all cruel treatment. And the uh, Canadian Parliament on uh, February 22nd uh, given the scope and the gravity of the situation and uh, declared the atrocities committed by Chinese government against Uyghurs as a genocide. And uh, now, as of today, uh, six countries already acknowledge the crimes that the uh, Chinese government committed in East Turkestan as genocide. What we do in Canada is we do, uh, we have two missions or two objectives. One is research and the documentation. We research the situation of Uyghurs and, uh, and in, in general or a specific case basis research we do. At the same time, we do documentation and uh, we, uh, we share our resources and documentations with the civil societies, NGOs and the parliamentarians and the government institutions, not only in Canada, uh, the globally. At the same time, we do advocacy work and we try to convince the Canadian public and the Canadian political circle uh, to take some concrete action by working with international allies and uh, with a certain measures to stop the atrocities uh, going on there. And this is our two missions. Uh, in practice, uh, actually, uh, we work with the parliamentarians and uh, provincial and the federal level. And uh, we, uh, we share, as I said, documentations, evidences, and the research results. And uh, we trigger debates in Canadian parliaments. 
and we, uh, by triggering the debates and the try to create a certain level of awareness among the parliament, 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 parliament members. And that is an important step for government to take action unless there is certain amount of awareness in our parliam parliamentarians that there will not be action by the government. For that reason, uh, we see it is important. And also we work with the multi-faith communities and uh, research organizations, universities, and the human rights organizations, and uh, uh, such as, for example, uh, uh, Canadian Museum for Human Rights, we are working very closely, and the Holocaust Museum in Montreal, we are working closely, and the other faith groups, just like Muslims and the Christians and the others. And we try to create public awareness as well. And now, uh, because of our work, there are more than, uh, as a recent poll shows, more than 83% Canadian public supported the parliamentary, uh, the past parliamentary motion acknowledging Uyghur genocide. And that is the result of our advocacy work in Canada. Lobbying parliament basically means uh, stay in touch with them and uh, stay in communication with them uh, daily basis and update them with the new information and uh, because of the COVID it, uh, it is not possible to have the face to face meeting but uh, we use all uh, modern technology just like uh, webinar session and we call their office, offices all the time, and we provide information and we do follow up. For example, if I send one piece of information or request to any parliamentarians, I give them a couple days to read or review the matters I requested, and then after a couple of days, uh, I do make a phone call and ask them whether they have received my information, if they receive it, whether they have read it, and if they read it, and uh, what are they going to do? And so you have to be very persistent. And unless you follow up, and there are tons of uh, matters uh, coming to parliamentarian's office, and uh, your, uh, your uh, piece of information will be uh, disappeared among the tons of other information. So we do follow up and we do make a frequent phone call and talk with their parliamentary staff. At the same time, we do petition across Canada and the targeted certain uh, ministry or a certain uh, committee in the parliament or a certain parliamentarians. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, within our two missions, at the same time, we do work with uh, uh, concerned uh, organizations working uh, for the promotion of human rights in China to uh, mitigate the Chinese influence in Canada because there is strong uh, lobbying effort by the Chinese government in Canada and we work with the organizations from Hong Kong and the Tibetans and the others and uh, by working together we try to mitigate the lobbying power of the Chinese embassies in Canada and the Chinese government-backed lobbying group in Canada at the same time the influence operation of Chinese government in Canada. So we have a number of mandates. For the, uh, the major success uh, we have achieved so far is the acknowledgement of Uyghur genocide by the Canadian Parliament with almost unanimous vote, and it was a challenging process and a long process, uh, because uh, oftentimes uh, it is not that uh, usual for parliamentarians and the Western government to stand up against China because of the economic interest and uh, established uh, relationship over a decades and the status quo. At, at the same time, there is a huge uh, conflict of interest with the business communities, banks, insurance companies, uh, high-tech companies at the same time, uh, pro-China lobbying group here, very effective. So uh, given this reality, it is not that easy to convince the parliamentarians to stand up against China. And for that reason, it, is, it, it has been very challenging. But 
What we did is one by one basis, we approached every parliamentarians, try to convince at least one and expand to another one. And we start from the, the committees, just like uh, International Human Rights Subcommittee in Parliament. We, uh, we pushed for a frequent hearing and uh, we facilitated uh, the victims to testify and the experts to testify. Uh, we pushed uh, the, the committee to produce a report with uh, concrete actionable recommendations to, to the government on the basis of the evidences uh, collected during the, test, uh, the hearing. So it is, it is a step-by-step -step basis. Uh, it is uh, just a painful process because uh, at some point uh, there, there will not be any decision if there is no consensus in the committee. And so you have to work with uh, bipartisan basis with all members from all political parties. And it is not that easy to, br to bring all of them into one topic to agree upon it. And because each party, they have different policy in relation to China, and they have different priorities, and they have different concerns. So you have to work really uh, in bipartisan uh, means to bring all of them together for a greater, greater cause and to create some kind of common sense for each of them uh, can accept. So uh, this is the process, at least this is my experience. And then you create certain level of consensus and then it is not that difficult to produce a report because report is based on the, the evidence collected during the uh, testimony. And uh, when uh, the report is uh, produced, uh, we have to push them to include some of the uh, advocacy points we are working on to include in the report as, a, uh, as a recommendations, to asking the Canadian government to act upon it. And so it starts from the, the smaller unit in the parliament and expand it to full house. So this is the, the procedure I simply followed and my organization, Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project, followed and so far uh, I can say that we, we have successfully uh, worked with the, the committees and the parliamentarians to, uh, 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 they, 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 they have been more than uh, 15 parliamentary hearings on a specific uh, Uyghur human rights issue. And uh, we helped them to bring the witnesses and the camp survivors and the experts to provide the expert uh, opinion. And uh, bring all pieces together uh, there, uh, there was a solid evidence to show the name of the crime, how to call it. And so genocide determination first made by the International Human Rights Subcommittee on October 20, 22nd in 2020. It was the big step. After the Parliamentary Human Rights Subcommittee acknowledged, it took another five months to bring the issue to the full house debate. And February 22nd, uh, by working with all members of the parliament, the parliamentarians in bipartisan means, we managed to have the vote in the parliament and the 266 against zero almost unanimously. Uh, all the parliamentarians agreed to call or name the crime with the actual uh, corresponding one, which is genocide. There are two means for Uyghurs. One, at least the crime committed by the Chinese government has a name. It is a genocide. Uh, the genocide recognition is not something that Uyghurs feel joyful about because uh, we lost many members of our family members. But at least uh, the cries and the sufferings of people back home in East Turkestan is heard by outside world and the victims acknowledged by outside world. It is important for that uh, uh, perspective. And also, when you call the crime by the name as it represented, and that there is a mechanism in international institutions that at least you can ask for action. For example, uh, there are a number of international institutions 
established to address the crime of genocide and the crime against humanity. So, unless uh, uh, parliament, parliaments and the governments acknowledge this crime, it is not that easy to take the case to international institutions. And so, uh, from that perspective, it is important as well. In fact, we are working with the org uh, different organizations uh, from Hong Kong and the Tibetans. And uh, we are not against business. We are against the businesses to exploit the, the Uyghurs as a slave labor to bring their products cheaper. We are against the slavery labor and the forced labor and the forced labor supply chain. And uh, the biz uh, businesses who operated in China, especially in the region like East Turkestan, they are complicit with the Chinese government's policy of genocide and the Chinese government's policy of forced labor. And we are against uh, the, the barbaric uh, practice of Chinese government. And we want the, the businesses to be diligent about what they are doing. And because uh, the area we are talking about, specifically Uyghur region in East Turkestan, uh, they produce the huge raw materials that we are consuming in our everyday life. We are talking about one third of the global supply of cotton or cotton related products and one third tomato related products and almost more than two thirds of global solar um, panel supply. These are the big numbers. You cannot ignore these numbers. And all of those uh, industries are using Uyghurs as a slave labor. Uh, Chinese government uh, just send, uh, sending those Uyghurs from concentration camps to slave labor facilities to work for nothing in 14 hours under semi-military control. This is against our domestic law. This is against our commitment in international organizations, just like international labor organizations and our, our assigned treaties within the UN system. So we are against the crimes that Chinese government committed by using forced labor, and we are against the Canadian and the global brands being complicit the Chinese crime. So if we compare the China today and the China 30 years back, there is a land and a sky difference. And the China today is bullying the countries like Canada. China today, with the economic power uh, it obtained with the investments we sent and the technology we transferred, now they are dictating, the China is dictating its term to Canada and sometimes is giving us an order how to behave and especially Chinese ambassador in Canada from time to time and instructing our elected institutions and the parliamentarians and telling them what to do, what they should stay away. And that China is exploiting the international system and that they are creating their own uh, the orbit and uh, creating their countries just turn around its own orbit by exporting authoritarianism. So our children will wake up in a totally different world after 30 years if we do not address this issue. That world will be totally different. There is no rule of law. There is no human rights. There is no freedom. Because China is using modern technology to create the society with total surveillance and monitoring, even the private life of people, and collecting data personal data from international uh, the population around the world by using it as Huawei 5G to develop it as artificial intelligence to create more control over the population around the world. So unless we address this issue now, issue will not vanish and it is getting bigger and bigger and it is going to affect everyone. And for that reason, I always tell to the people, 
the experience of Uyghurs today will be the experience of others tomorrow. So we have to address this issue now.